Hey guys, today I'm flying Swiss International Airlines flight LX1174 from Zurich to Stuttgart. Today the flight will be operated by Helvetic Airways on one of Embraer's new generation aircraft, the E190 E2. But I wouldn't know this until I step toward the plane to board. I arrived here in Zurich's E-Gates on this Swiss 777-300ER. This was only one of a few wide bodies here at this time, but beside that one there was this other 333, and then later I spotted this gorgeous Edelweiss A340-300. The Edelweiss 343 is what I flew on in my most viewed trip report. This isn't the one I was on. I was on Bellalp, this one is named Melch Seefruit. Forgive me if I butchered that, but yeah, it's nice seeing another one of these. I couldn't stay here long, so it's probably good that these were among the only interesting heavies today. My flight is listed to be at the A and B gate area, so I'm gonna have to take the underground train there. As you know, Swiss Airlines is the airline that sparked my love for aviation, so I do have quite a few good memories flying through Zurich, especially taking this tram. The last time I did, I happened to be flying to Vienna on the Austrian Airlines Retro A320, which was cool. Willkommen am Flughafen Zürich. Dieser Zug bringt Sie zu den Gates A, B und D zur Gepäckausgabe, dem Zurich Duty Free und zum Ausgang. Welcome to Zurich. Welcome to Switzerland. I'm Heidi and this is my home. Let me show you around. Just look out the window. I'll be at gate A55 today, one of the bus gates, but I still have plenty of time here to do some plane spotting. So, I said earlier in this video that I'd be flying on an Embraer 190E2, but at this time I had absolutely no idea that I would be on one of those. No matter how many times I tried to get the Wi-Fi to work here it wouldn't, which meant that I couldn't check Flight Raider 24. The last time I could check on my aircraft was back when I was in San Francisco, about 12 hours ago, and it was at that time my aircraft was set to be Hotel Bravo Juliet Victor Papa, a generic Embraer 190. I had no idea that they would upgrade it to an E2, and I would only find that out for sure when the bus got to the plane. So yeah, as I was watching the aircraft at the remote stands trying to predict which one my plane would be, I had no idea it would be one of the E2s. That aircraft taxiing over there, that's a normal E190, the only one I could see here as a matter of fact, so I was confused on why it was leaving. This was the first sign that I wouldn't be on the aircraft type I was expecting to be on. I didn't mention this in my Austrian Airlines video, but the exact same thing happened then. You know I had to be rebooked on Austrian Airlines, but the Wi-Fi here wasn't working at that time either, so I didn't know that I'd be on the retro until I spotted it at my gate. I guess that is what happens when I am in a European airport and the Wi-Fi isn't working. I just get surprised. Boarding began soon, and when my group was called, I got on the bus. Now came the second sign that I wouldn't be on the plane I was expecting. When I scanned my pass, they gave me a printout slip saying that my seat was changed. From what was originally supposed to be 11F, I was now to be seated in 27A. They told me it was because of an equipment change, aka an aircraft type change. Now things were getting exciting. The Zurich to Stuttgart route uses a wide variety of aircraft. It will use any aircraft in the Helvetic fleet or even even in the Swiss mainline fleet. In rare cases, it may even use an Edelweiss plane. So yeah, now I had no idea what plane I would be on, and boy was I excited. Wherever this bus would take me would be a surprise. 
Bitte festhalten, der Bus fährt ab. Please hold on, the bus is departing. Herzlich willkommen und danke, dass Sie über den Flughafen Zürich reisen. Welcome and thank you for traveling by a Zurich Airport. And here we are. Looks like our ride to Stuttgart was changed to Hotel Bravo Alpha Zulu Bravo, a four-year-old Embraer 190E2. So, the E-2 is what I'd consider to be Embraer's next generation aircraft. Their Neo, you could say, or their Max, minus the bad reputation. As an Embraer E-Jet fan myself, it's kinda weird that I haven't thought much about getting a chance to fly on this modernized version of the E-Jet. Let's be real, I keep forgetting it even exists, probably because it sadly hasn't gotten many orders. Though there are airlines like Azul and Porter that have a lot of them, and then there's Helvetic, the one I'm on, that has quite a few. But yeah, though I haven't thought much about the E-2, this aircraft swap is still a nice surprise. So my first impression of the plane itself, it's got a beautiful interior. I love the mood lighting. Also, I didn't catch this on film, but the carpet is red, and that coupled with the light gray seats gives this interior the perfect color scheme for Helvetic in my opinion. But when we actually sit in the seats, that's when problems arise. For one, they are very short and slim, not comfortable. And then there's the legroom. According to Seat Guru, the pitch is 31 to 33 inches, but I refuse to believe that, as you can see here. It's pretty bad. Fortunately though, this flight will only be about 25 minutes long, so the seat and legroom won't bother me today. And yeah, this is the shortest flight on my channel, ironically taken after my longest flight. Dethroning Fargo to Minneapolis. Tray table is pretty small as you can see, but it has two cup groves. The literature pocket had a lot of stuff. We got the branded Air Swissness bag, then the safety card for the 190E2. This is technically a Swiss flight, so we have their buy on board menu. This flight is very short, so I didn't get anything from here. Then we have the card with the QR code to the Swiss in-flight magazine. Yeah, it's online now. And finally, we have our shopping magazine. I love how I was able to see the plane I arrived on from my window. I then spotted a KLM B737-800 heading for most likely Amsterdam. When I was originally supposed to go to Vienna in 2020, I was booked on one of these. It was 2020, I probably don't need to say why I couldn't. I then saw another Helvetic Embraer E2, this one being the longer 195 variant. That variant also happens to be the more common one, which I find pretty interesting.
This is my third time doing the Zurich to Stuttgart route. The last two times I did it were both the noon flight LX1168, and both those times happened to be on very special aircraft. When I first did the route in 2013, it was on the Avro RJ100 in the Star Alliance livery, otherwise known as the BAE-146. I had no idea that in a few years after that, the aircraft would be removed from the Swiss fleet, nor that it was such a rare plane. Nowadays, it's even rarer and super hard to find a flight on one. The second time I took this route was in 2018, on a wet leased Dash 8400 from Austrian Airlines, coincidentally also in the Star Alliance livery. Later I found out that it was Tail Oscar Echo Lima Golf Quebec, the oldest flying Dash 8400 in the world, and also the third prototype of the Dash 8400. The aircraft now flies for Philippine Airlines under a different tail number, but yeah, the last two times I've done this route were on some very special aircraft. And it looks like I'm kind of continuing that tradition, this being my first flight on the Embraer E2. Because this was such a short flight, our maximum altitude was only 15,000 feet. Coincidentally, when I was leaving Stuttgart a week later, I spotted this exact same plane and got this photo. I thought of using this photo for the thumbnail, but in the end, I decided that the close-up one would be better fit for my first E2 trip report. But that won't stop it from making a quick appearance in my video on my flight out of Stuttgart. To my surprise for this 25 to 30 minute flight, the cabin crew actually came around with some complimentary service. For starters, we got a water bottle, and because this is technically a Swiss flight, we get the famous Swiss chocolate. Tastes great, miles better than Lufthansa's chocolate. 
So yeah, service on a flight less than half an hour long. A fantastic surprise, as normally I wouldn't expect that on a flight of this length. Props to Helvetic or Swiss. And we are back! I think this is the third landing in Stuttgart on this channel, and yes, there will be a third takeoff from here coming soon. So, this was a 25 minute flight, well, actually 27, but same thing. A very short flight is my point, the shortest one on my channel. And short flights like these are hard to mess up, so as expected, nothing about this experience was terrible. So let's start with what Swiss, or Helvetic, did to impress me. The crew and service were the big highlights in my book. I never expected any sort of drink and snack service on a flight of this length, especially considering what I've seen on European carriers lately. So huge win for them on that. Also, I like the new Embraer plane, with its mood lighting and quiet engines. Good job to Embraer on this one, and I wish more airlines would order it. And now for the losses of Helvetic. Mainly, the seat comfort. The seats were short and slim, not a good start. And I'm not going to sugarcoat this based on what Seat Guru says, the legroom was bad. It didn't bother me today because, you know, this was a 25 minute flight. But Swiss can put this plane on much longer routes, I'm talking even Zurich to Athens. No thanks. As you saw on the scoreboard, I gave the seat comfort a 6 out of 10. The only reason it isn't any lower than that is because the flight was short. Yeah, I don't know if the mainland Swiss aircraft are any better than this, I hope they are. The final score for LX1174 is 7.9 out of 10. This was a good flight, but had it been longer, I can't be sure that I'd say the same thing. Once again, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a like and to subscribe so that you don't miss my next video, which will be Lufthansa on an Airbus A350.